Welcome to video lecture 2.1 on right triangle trigonometry. So if triangle ABC is a right triangle with angle C measuring 90 degrees, I'll indicate that here, then the six trigonometric functions for A are defined as follows. So sine of A is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of A is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse and tangent of A is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. And then, no surprise, cosecant of A is equal to the reciprocal of sine of A, so hypotenuse over opposite. Secant of A equals hypotenuse over adjacent. And cotangent of A equals adjacent over opposite. Now, in this case, we're not interested in finding the trigonometric functions of an angle that's drawn in standard position right now. What we're doing is just finding the six trigonometric functions for some angle in a triangle. And notice A is this angle up top here. So that's why I'm not defining these ratios in terms of X, Y, and R as we did before, since those were drawn in standard position. And right now, this is not. Okay, so let's go ahead find the six um, trigonometric functions for the angle theta given below. And here notice one of the sides is missing. I can see that this is the 90 degree side, but I do need to figure out what the length of that missing side is. Perhaps you recognize this is one of our um, Pythagorean triples. So this side here is eight, eight, 15, 17 is a common right triangle. If you didn't remember, that's fine. So you could use the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared plus 225 equals 289. Subtracting 225, then you get a squared equals 64. And a is equal to 8. I'm not going to use negatives because we're referencing the sides of the triangle that are not oriented in any particular way. So you don't have to worry if it's positive or negative when you're just working with a triangle and it's not placed on a coordinate system. Okay, good. Just some common um, right triangles that come up are the three, four, five right triangle. We just went over eight, 15, 17. Also, we've done before 7, 24, 25, and you can take any multiple of these ratios. So, for example, 3, 4, 5, or 6, 8, 10. So those proportions hold, and you don't have to do the Pythagorean theorem every single time if you recognize it. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to list out the six trigonometric functions for the angle theta. So sine of theta is going to be the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be 8 over 17. Cosine theta is going to be the ratio of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which would be 15 over 17. And tangent of theta is going to be the opposite over the adjacent side. So 8 over 15. And then we can go ahead and get the other three pretty easily. Cosecant theta, that's equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite side. Or you could just take the reciprocal of sine theta. If you remember our reciprocal identities from the previous unit, so 17 over 8. Secant theta would be 17 over 15. And cotangent theta is 15 over 8. All right, there's our final answer. Let's box it. Make sure you put everything in this order. Sine, cosine, tangent in the first column. Cosecant, secant, cotangent in the second column. You have to put theta after every single time you write a trig function. You can't just write sine equals. Sine of what? Sine of theta or x or whatever the problem's using to represent the angle. Okay, it's wrong if you don't put it there. Good. Now, a new definition. Since sine and cosine are co-functions, as are tangent and cotangent. Oh, that shouldn't be since, just sine. Sine and cosine are co-functions, as are tangent and cotangent, and secant and cosecant. And what this means is, you'll see there's a special relationship between the values of sine and cosine. 
when we're dealing with complementary angles, same for tangent and cotangent, same for secant and cosecant. And we say when they are cofunctions, that sine is the cofunction of cosine and cosine is the cofunction of sine, etc. So here we have a right triangle with sides and angles A, B, C. Angle C is 90 degrees. I know angles A and B are complementary. How do I know that? Well, all of the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if angle C is already 90 degrees, that means A and B, the sum of these two is 90 degrees. So they are complementary. And if you'll notice, the sine of B would be the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse, which would be B over C. That's equal to cosine of A, because cosine of A would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is the equal ratio. So sine of B is equal to cosine of A. That's because they're cofunctions, and A and B are complementary angles. We're going to use this fact in just a second. And then this holds for all of the cofunctions. So cosine of B would equal sine of A. Notice you work with the two cofunctions and then you swap out the angles that are complementary. Again, tangent of B equals cotangent of A. Cotangent of B equals tangent of A. Secant of B equals cosecant of A. And cosecant of B equals secant of A. All right, let's see how we're going to apply this. And if you'll recall, complementary angles are angles that sum to 90 degrees. Remember the little trick I taught you? Write a C, draw one line, and now it's a nine. So complementary angles sum up to 90 degrees. Okay, so fill in the blanks so that the expressions become a true statement. Notice here they're saying sine of 10 degrees is going to equal cosine of what? Well, I know sine and cosine are cofunctions, so they will have the same value when we're dealing with two complementary angles. So really, all I need to do is figure out what is the complement of 10 degrees. And in order to do that, I'm just going to take 90 minus 10, which is 80 degrees. So sine of 10 degrees equals cosine of 80 degrees. Same thing for the next example. So we have secant of 27 degrees is equal to cosecant of something. So again, secant and cosecant are cofunctions. So they'll have the same value when the angles that we're dealing with are complements of each other. So I just need to take 90 minus 27 to find the complement of 27 degrees and it's 63 degrees. All right, last one, <clears throat> excuse me, this one might be a little tricky, but you just follow the same process. So tangent and cotangent are cofunctions. I need to figure out the complement of 90 minus x. Well, what were we doing the past two examples? We're gonna do the same thing. 90 minus 90 minus x, if I distribute this negative, now I have 90 minus 90 plus x. Those 90s cancel out, and I'm just left with x. And maybe you already noticed, 90 minus x is going to be the complement of x. So that is it. Good. Now. In the previous unit, we went over two special triangles, the 30-60-90 triangle and the 45-45-90 triangle. And if you'll remember, I showed you a picture where we looked at the proportions or the ratio between the sides. So for the 30-60-90 triangle, we labeled the smallest side, the side opposite 30 degrees T. Then the side opposite the 60 degree angle was T rad 3. And then the side opposite the 90 degree angle was 2t. Now in this particular case here, we have again 30, 60, 90 triangle, but we're letting t equal 1. So the sides are now labeled accordingly. 
So the side opposite the 30 degree angle is just one because we're letting T be one. The side opposite the 60 degree angle is rad three. And the side opposite the 90 degree angle is two. Good, and then we did something similar here with the 45, 45, 90 triangle. So the sides opposite the 45 degree angles were T and T before, we're just letting T be one. So these are each one. And then the hypotenuse is T rad two or just rad two in this case. Now using these two special triangles, we can find the trigonometric functions of 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. And we can continue finding sine, cosine, and tangent for these special angles along with zero degrees and 90 degrees. So let's go ahead, let's fill in this chart together, okay? I'm gonna start off, don't be alarmed, I'm gonna start off with 60 degrees. So we're gonna look at this little green triangle and let's find the six trigonometric functions for 60 degrees. Okay, so remember, I'm going to start off here finding sine of 60 degrees. Sine is the ratio of the opposite over hypotenuse, which is rad 3 over 2. Cosine of 60 is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is rad 3 over 1. So just rad 3. Now, cosecant of theta is going to be hypotenuse over opposite, so 2 over rad 3. But remember, we have to rationalize. We have to multiply by rad 3 over rad 3. So that's just going to be 2 rad 3 over 3. I'm going to clean it up so we don't have a messy chart. 2 rad 3 over 3. Secant theta is the ratio of the hypotenuse over adjacent, so 2 over 1, which is just 2. And then cotangent theta, you could think of it as adjacent over opposite, so 1 over rad 3, or you could take the reciprocal of tangent. So 1 over rad 3, if you rationalize, which you should, just becomes rad 3 over 3. All right, very good. Now, I'm going to fill in 30 degrees next since I'm going to use my co-functions. Notice 30 and 60 are complementary. So what does that mean? That means sine of 60 is equal to cosine of 30. So this is going to be rad 3 over 2. And similarly, sine of 30 is equal to cosine of 60, which is 1 half. And then I can do the same thing with tangent and cotangent. So tangent of 30 is going to be rad 3 over 3. And cotangent of 30 degrees is rad 3. And similarly with cosecant and secant of theta, those are cofunctions. So cosecant of 30 is going to be 2. And secant of 30 is going to be 2 rad 3 over 3. All right, very good. Then we're going to look at the next triangle, the isosceles right triangle, the 45, 45, 90, to fill in this row here. So remember, sine of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And I'm calling this one theta. It doesn't matter since they're both 45. So you could look from any vantage point. Usually we use the bottom angles, though. So 1 over rad 2, remember we have to rationalize, so I'm going to multiply by rad 2 over rad 2, so this is rad 2 over 2. Cosine theta is going to be the same, right? Adjacent and opposite sides are both 1, so rad 2 over 2. And then tangent theta is 1 over 1, which is just 1. Good, and then cosecant theta, that's going to be hypotenuse over opposite, so just rad 2. Secant theta is the same, and cotangent theta will be 1. Okay, beautiful. Now, for 0 and 90, it's a little trickier because we can't draw a triangle. Those are quadrantial angles. So I want you to think instead for how we found those trigonometric functions using x, y, and r. 
So I'll list it out here. So remember, sine of theta was y over r, cosine theta was x over r, and tangent theta is y over x. And then cosecant theta is r over y, secant theta is r over x, and cotangent theta is x over y. So now let's deal with zero degrees. So zero degrees, just pick a point on the terminal side of an angle with zero degree measure. Easiest point to pick is just one comma zero. So that means x is one and y is zero. Okay, so sine of zero is gonna be zero over one. That's just zero. If you have a zero in the numerator and something non-zero in the denominator, then it's zero. Okay, cosine of theta, that's going to be x divided by r, which is one divided by r, which is also one. So this is one. Remember, r is the distance from the origin to the point. So r is equal to one, r is never negative. Tangent theta, so tangent theta is y divided by x, which is zero divided by one, which is again, zero. And then here's where we run into some problems. So cosecant theta is r divided by y. r is one, y is zero. A non-zero number divided by zero is undefined. So cosecant theta is undefined. Secant theta. Secant theta is r, one, divided by x, one. So that's just one. And cotangent theta, that's x divided by y, which again is one divided by zero. So this is undefined. Okay, similar for 90 degrees. Now let's pick a point up here. This time the coordinates would be zero comma one. So x is zero, y is one, and r is one again. Remember r is the distance from the origin to that point. r is never negative. Okay, so sine of theta, that's going to be one divided by one, so one. Cosine is going to be zero divided by one, which is zero. Tangent, which is y over x, is one over zero, so it's undefined here. Cosecant theta is one divided by one, which is one. Secant theta, watch out, r divided by x, that's undefined. And then cotangent theta, x divided by y, zero divided by one, which is zero. Okay, another thing I could have done, actually, 0 and 90 are complements. So I could have used the fact that since sine and cosine are co-functions, their values are equal at complementary angles. Do you see? Oh, I highlighted the wrong one. Tangent and cotangent. Why is cotangent so far away? There we go. And then here it's undefined undefined and undefined undefined one one good okay these values come up repeatedly throughout the course and in the rest of your math classes so make sure that you memorize them somehow you probably have seen them before and when we do the unit circle later on I'll show you another way to understand and memorize them a little bit more easily Okay, so find the values of each expression. For now, you can reference the chart if you need to, but hopefully soon you get to a point where you have them memorized, okay? So the first one is four times sine of 30 degrees. So sine of 30 degrees, you can look back what it's equal to. This is four times a half. Sine of 30 is one half, so that's two, and we're done. And you're not allowed to use your calculator for any of these. Cosine cubed of 60 degrees. So remember when you see this little cube here, 
This stands for cosine of 60 degrees cubed. It's basically an abbreviation so you don't have to write those parentheses. So cosine of 60, that's one half, and then I'm gonna cube it. So you cube the numerator, cube the denominator. This is one eighth. All right. Example C, tangent squared 45 degrees plus tangent squared 60 degrees. If you need to remind yourself, this means tangent of 45, and then you square it, plus tangent of 60, and then you square it. Okay, so tangent of 45 degrees, check your chart if you need to, or if you already know it, great, fill it in, it's one. Plus tangent of 60, that's rad three, and then we square it. So this is gonna be one plus rad three squared is just three. So this is four. All right, cosecant of 45 degrees. That one's just straight off the chart, nothing fancy to do. That's equal to rad two. You can draw the triangle if you need to, but it, it'll save you a lot of time if you just memorize them all. Secant of 90 degrees, that's undefined. And cotangent of zero degrees is also undefined. Okay, very good. Now for the last example here, we're gonna replace x with 30 degrees, y with 45 degrees, and z with 60 degrees, and then simplify as much as possible, okay? So six cosine x, that's gonna be six times cosine. They told me I'm replacing x with 30 degrees, okay. No problem. So cosine of 30 degrees, that's equal to square root of 3 over 2. Now when you multiply this, just be careful. This is 6 over 1. So the 2 and the 6 can cancel out. I'm just left with 3 in the numerator now. So this is 3 rad 3, like that. Ooh, good. Okay, next one, negative 2 times sine of 90 minus y, okay? So I'm replacing y with 45 degrees. So I have negative 2 times sine of 90 minus 45. Good. So this is negative 2 times sine 90 minus 45 is 45. So do we know what sine of 45 degrees is? I hope so. It's rad two over two, and then that's getting multiplied by this negative two that's still in the front. And it's over one, if you need to add that to help you. These twos cancel, and then I'm just left with negative rad two. Okay, good. Last one, two times tangent of z minus 30 degrees. So this is gonna be two times tangent. What is z? They're telling me z is 60 degrees. So I'm gonna replace z with 60. So this is 60 minus 30. So this is two times tangent of 30 degrees. Tangent of 30 degrees is rad three over three. This is two over one, nothing cancels, right? Do you see that? Okay, so you just multiply the numerators by each other, two rad three, multiply the denominators by each other, and then you call it a day. So box it and move on. Very good, so that concludes the lesson. Coming up next are, finally you get to use your calculator, hooray, and trigonometric functions of an acute angle.